This tutorial is going to be one that I highly recommend not missing. We're going to use simple techniques and combine them to create this super cool sci-fi alien environment. So let's figure out how we can create this in Blender. In our default scene, we're going to select our default cube and press SZ 0.1 to scale it down on the Z axis. Then we'll scale it up on everything but the Z axis by pressing Shift Z and we'll type in 5 so that it scales up by 5 units. Now we need to apply the scale. So we'll press Ctrl A and then click Apply Scale so that we can apply the rest of the modifiers without issues. The first modifier that we'll add is a bevel modifier to round in up the edges. So let's go to the modifiers tab, add in a bevel modifier and just increase the segments to something like 3 or 4 and reduce this amount to 0 0.05 to so just give it slightly sharper edges. If you decrease this even more like 2.5 you'll get an even sharper edge. So I think this looks good enough but I still want it to be shaded smooth so that if by chance we render it at a really high resolution we won't be able to see these lines. So let's right click it and click shade auto smooth or else you can go to object shade auto smooth over here. Once you have this done, we need to add in a modifier to create variations of this and make it form like a tower. So that we're going to do by using an array modifier. So let's click add modifier and choose array, but we don't want it to move on the x axis. So we're going to have to add in an object to act as the array modifier object. So let's press shift A and search for an empty and we'll choose plane axis. Now I'll just press G Z to move it up on the Z axis by a little bit. And then I want to scale each of these down as they go up, but I don't want them to scale on the Z axis. So I'll press S shift Z and just scale it down to something like 0.8 and that is going to be our empty. Then we can select this object again, go down and switch off relative offset and choose object offset over here. Then we can expand it and go down and for the object, we'll just select that new empty that we just created. And that way you see you get another copy right on top. So I want there to be some gap between these two. So I'll select the empty and press G Z and just bring it up till I have a gap that I like. So I think something like that is all right. So now we can go ahead and increase the count. So let's go back to our object and under the array modifier let's increase the count till we get a number that I like. So I think I'll go with 12. So this is our pyramid like object and on top of this object we need our main focus point. So I'll press shift a and add in another default cube and then I'll press gz and bring it up to the top. Now I want it to be rotated such that the tip is here and it rotates seamlessly about the z axis and for that we have to rotate it on the y axis by 45 degrees followed by rotation about the x axis by 35.26 degrees. So we press rx 35.26. So that brings it perfectly to the corner. Most people would think that you'd have to move it by 45 degrees on all of the axes to bring it up like this. But if you do the math, it comes out to around 32.5 degrees. So now we have this and we can just rotate it about the Z axis to create the animation. So that works perfectly all right. And now we can move on to the actual alien like hair that's going to be present in our scene. For that, we want a particle system to be present around this first edge. So we'll press shift A and search for a mesh plane and we'll just scale the plane up till it matches approximately the size of the outer plane. Then we'll press G Z to just bring it on top of that plane after which we'll press tab to go into edit mode and we'll choose face select by pressing this button up here or tapping the number three then we'll tap i to create an inset and we'll just scale it down till it comes just outside the second step that we can see over here so i think something around this size will look good enough after which i'll just tap x faces to delete that inner face so this way when we create a particle system it'll be created only on this outer ring which is exactly what i want now we have to actually create the particle system let's go to the particle systems properties over here and then press this plus button to create a new particle system. However, I don't want the particle system to be an emitter. I want it to be hair, so I'll select hair. Now we need to make a few changes to make this nice and alien-like. The first thing that I want to do is actually reduce the number from 1000 down to 100 so that we have much fewer particles being emitted. And don't worry, we'll see a lot more of these because we'll be using interpolated children. However, the number of segments determines how smoothly these hair particles are going to curve. And right now, if we have only five segments, it'll be very, very short. So we can increase this segment to something really high. We'll go with 50 and we might change this later on. Next, the actual height of every single one of the hair particles is exactly the same and that makes it look too uniform. I want to increase and decrease the height randomly and for that we have to check this little advanced button over here and then we'll get this velocity tab. We can expand the velocity tab and start increasing the randomization and that will actually randomize the length of the hair in a manner of speaking. So let's make this randomize 0.5 and that'll be all right. Next, we have to play around with the children. So let's expand this children tab and choose interpolated. Now I want the display amount to be equal to the render amount so that I can see what it's going to look like when it's finally rendered. So I'll increase this number from 10 to 100 and that will show me exactly how many hair strands will be present when it's rendered. Now all of these seem to just go up in straight lines which makes it really hard to see whatever's behind it and it doesn't give that alien feel. To give that alien feel I'm going to actually go down to this clumping option and expand it and then increase clumping all the way to one and that way the tips all clump through that single area and that actually makes it look 
look like these alien tentacle things. So that looks nice, but now we need to actually animate these strands to give it some motion. For that, we'll go ahead and first switch on all of our animation defaults. So let's go to our output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second, change the end frame to 150 so that it's a five second long animation. Output folder can be wherever you want to store it. File format, we're gonna choose FFmpeg video. And for the encoding, we're gonna change the container from Matroska to MPEG4 and the output quality will keep as perceptually lossless. Then we'll have to add in some turbulence, which is going to wave our hair around. So we press Shift A and search for a force field turbulence. So that's present over here. And then we can just press GZ so that we can see the empty. And then we'll have to play around with the turbulence settings. So for that, we go to the physics properties over here and we can start playing around with the strength and the size. So I'll first increase the strength to 10. And as soon as I do that, I can clearly see that these hair strands are bending at right angles, which means there isn't enough resolution. But we already increased the number of segments. So there must be another setting that we missed. Let's select that plane again, go back to the particle properties and under render, you can see that we are going to be rendering it as a path, but there's also a number of steps down here. And that's present, not just for the render, it's present for the viewport as well. So let's expand viewport and just increase this strand steps all the way to something like seven so that we get really nice smooth curves. And similarly for the render, we'll increase the steps to seven as well. Now you can see how the nice wavy motion has come in, but I feel like it's moving too quickly as in the size of the turbulence is too small. So that's why we'll go back to our turbulence object by selecting it from the outliner and then going back to the physics properties and increasing the size to maybe five. And that should just make everything nice and smooth. So that looks really nice, but it's still not animated. So now we have to actually create the animation. And for that, all we have to do is just move this empty around. So we can either rotate it about an axis. So suppose we say R Y and just rotate it, you'll get some type of motion and you can rotate it by 360 degrees to make it a perfectly seamless loop. However, I'm not going to just be rotating it about a single axis today. Instead, Instead, I'm going to press shift A and search for a Bezier circle curve and I'll press GZ and move that up to about where the empty was present. And now I'll select this turbulence object and go to the constraints properties over here. And then I'll click add object constraint and choose follow path. Then for the target path, I'll choose that Bezier circle that we just created. And then I'll press alt G to clear location so that it comes perfectly to where the Bezier circle is. Now on frame zero, I'll hover over the offset and tap I after which I'll expand the timeline a bit, go to frame 150 and then change the offset to 100, which makes it go through one full loop. And then I'll press I to add in a second keyframe. Then I'll bring my cursor down here and press T linear to make it a smooth loop. Now, if you play the animation, you should be able to see how the empty moves and all of your hair particles moves along with the empty. Now your frame rate might drop a lot. So you can change the playback from play every frame to frame dropping to get an idea of the realistic speed at which these hair particles will be moving. In case you still aren't able to see it smooth enough, you can select the hair particles again, go to the particle properties and for the viewport display, decrease the stand steps and also for the children or display amount decrease it down to 10 and just view the speed of the animation and the overall look of the animation in case you want a different seed it's as simple as taking this bezier circle and either moving it on the z axis to get a different seed or maybe rotating it about some axis and essentially every single one of these operations that you do will give you a new random seed which may or may not be more suited to what you want to do so feel free to go wild with this and just play around with the different positions of your bezier circle and different rotations and orientations. Once you're happy with the location, you can go ahead and start animating your main cube. So you go to frame zero, tap I rotation, and then go to frame 150, which is your last frame and press R Z 360 and then tap I rotation and come down here, press T linear. And now even your cube rotates along with the rest of your hair particles and things in the scene. Once you're happy with that, you can start off with the actual texturing of the different objects present in the scene. We'll start off with our main cube object. So let's go to the material properties press this plus button to create a new material and we'll name this main cube. Now we'll bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window and change this from the 3D viewport to the shader editor. Now we'll switch our viewport shading from solid to rendered by pressing this button so that we can actually see the changes that we make. After which we'll zoom into the principal BSDF and start playing around with these values. The first thing that I want to do is make it a completely metallic cube. So I'll increase the metallic value all the way to one and then I'll press shift A and search for a Voronoi texture. Now for this first Voronoi texture, I want to control both the roughness as well as the bump. So I'll keep it from Euclidean to Chebyshev and I'll press shift A and search for a color ramp so that I have better control. Next, I'll plug the distance into the factor and take this output color and plug it into the roughness. So then you can start bringing in the black by a bit and bringing in the white by a bit just to increase the contrast. After which I don't want any area to be completely shiny or completely non-reflective. So I'll take this black and give it a value of maybe 0.3 and then I'll select this white and change the value down to 0.8. Finally, I'll press shift A and search for a bump node so that I can convert this into normal data as well. And then I'll take the color, plug it into the 
height and take this normal and plug it into the normal. Now, normally it would be best to keep this as black and white values instead of gray values to go into the bump. But I know that the strength is way too much either way. So I can use these reduced values and then further decrease the strength even more. I'll reduce it to 0.4 and that seems all right. But I feel like I need to increase the contrast a bit more. So I'll just bring in the values and that seems great. Now that we have this, we can go ahead and add in some cracked lines that are radiating out light. For that, we use another Voronoi texture or we can take this and press Shift D to duplicate it. But this time we're going to change this from F1 to distance to edge. Then just to preview it with the node wrangler switched on, we can press Control Shift click or we can directly plug this distance into the surface of the material output in case you don't have node wrangler switched on. Next, we can press Shift D and search for a color ramp for better control as usual and then plug it in after the Voronoi texture. Now I want to bring in these white areas by a lot. So I'll just bring it in and that way we just have these cracked edges and I want to have some thickness for them. So I'll just bring in the black by a little bit and bring this in very, very close. But I don't want to change this from linear to constant because I still want there to be some fall off even though it's very, very minimal. Beyond that, I think that the cracks are too small right now. So I'll decrease the scale to a value of two and that way the cracks just become much larger. Now I actually want these cracks to be white and the rest of it to be black. So I'll just switch the places of these two stops and by flipping them around or just changing the colors would do, you get this sort of a look. And this is what I'm going to use as the emission strength. But I want the emission strength to also go beyond one. So I'll press shift A and search for a math node and change this from add to multiply and multiply it by a large number, maybe something like 200. And then I'll plug the color into the first socket and take this output from the multiply and plug it into the emission strength. Next, I'll change the emission color to a nice bluish color, after which I'll plug this principal BSDF into the material output. If you have node wrangler switched on, you can control shift click the principal BSDF to do the same. Now this doesn't look too good because we haven't set up our render defaults. So let's go to our render properties, switch on bloom and screen space reflections. And under the bloom, I'll just go ahead and clamp it down at something like five, as well as I'll reduce the intensity to 0.02. Now we have some nice reflections occurring as well as some nice bloom happening as well. So it looks much better. Along with that, we'll go to the world properties and just change the background color to a dark black for now. And we'll of course change that as well really soon. Next, I'll select my light or the the default light that's present and press alt G to clear location after which I'll press GZ and just bring it up till it comes above the cube and I'll change the type from a point lamp to a spot lamp. Then I'll press alt R to clear its rotation and I'll change the size from 75 degrees to maybe 45 degrees to just make it a much narrower circle. I'll press GZ and bring it up and I think that seems all right. I might also increase this power so bring it up to maybe 10,000 and that looks really cool. But to actually make this look even cooler what I can do is switch this tab from object to world and for the world output I'll use another socket into the volume. I'll press shift a and search for a volume scatter and I'll plug the volume into the volume. Now you might not see anything and that might be because the density of the volume scatter is too high. So let's start by reducing the density to 0.2 and now we see this really nice god ray like effect which gives a lot of depth to the scene. However if you're using Eevee there's a few settings that you can use to improve this even more. So before we get to those settings we'll just place our camera. So let's select the camera press alt g to clear location alt R to clear rotation followed by RX90 and then GXY to bring it back and just place it wherever you feel comfortable and then press zero to go into your camera view. Then you can press GZ and bring it up to whatever location you think suits your situation and then press GY to move it back even more Then just place it accordingly. And once you're happy with the placement, go to the camera properties, viewport display and change passport out all the way to one. Now in your render properties, expand volumetrics and firstly decrease the tile size to two pixels or four pixels and then play around with the start and end values over here. Start increasing the start value till your volume starts disappearing. So you can clearly see that at this point, I'm still able to see all of the volume that's in my scene. But as I move it further, it starts disappearing. So I have to bring it to that point where it does not disappear anymore. So I think that's happening for me at a value of around 15 meters. So that seems all right. And then start decreasing the end value until you get the exact same type of effect. So it should start disappearing and just then bring it back till it's present. So I think a value of 25 meters will be good enough. Now you can see how dense the lighting actually is. So let's reduce it even further. Let's go down to 0.01 and that seems pretty good. Next, let's give our steps its own material. So let's select it. And since it is the default cube, it should have the default material already applied to it. You can check that over here. And yes, it has the default material. So you can go ahead and rename this to steps. Of course, if there was no material, you could just press the add new material and do the same. Next, we'll change this back from world to object and we'll play around with the steps. Now for one part, I want it to be very metallic, but 
but I also want there to be these nice ring lights present towards the bottom of each of these faces. So the way I'm going to do that is by searching for an emission node. So press shift and search for emission and I'm going to mix these two and then play around with the factor. So I'll press shift and search for a mix shader node. Plug that in right here and take this emission and plug it into the second shader. Then I'll press shift A and search for a texture coordinate node and I'm also going to press shift A and search for a separate XYZ node. Now the texture coordinate node has this socket called normal and this will give you the normal values for each of these. So if I control shift click you can see the X value, the Y value as well as the Z value. Now I'm interested in the Z value because it points upward and you can see how the fade off actually occurs on this edge. Then you can press shift and search for a color ramp and just punch these numbers in by bringing the black slider in and the white slider in and then just moving this till you get a situation that you're happy with. So let's actually bring this in really really close and then control click to add in a new stop or you can press that plus button and move it here and change this from white to black. So that way you just have a ring of light present at the absolute upper edge. In case you want to move this towards the center you can actually search for a math node and add a value onto the Z. So let's press shift and search for a math node plug that in over here and just play around with the value until you get it where you want. So I think I'm going to go with this sort of a region so that it's towards the bottom of each of these cubes. Remember if you actually switch off your bevel this will no longer work because it's the bevel that's actually allowing you to use the z value even outside the complete bottom. So make sure that you have bevel enabled and in case you're not getting what you want you can actually play around with the bevel amount and things like that till you get something that you're happy with. Either way once you're happy with it use this as the factor to the mix shader and plug the output of the shader in into the surface of the material output. Then go ahead and change the emission color from this white color to the same bluish color and increase the strength to whatever you want. Apart from that, I also want to give some bluish hue to the spotlight that I have. So I'll select the light again, go to the light properties and change the color to that same bluish hue. If you switch off overlays, you can get an idea of what your scene currently looks like. Now I actually think this looks good enough, but I just want to add in a background plane as well that'll act as the floor. So I'll press shift A and search for a mesh plane and I'll press S to scale it up and then I'll press GZ to just just bring it down underneath the first step that we had created. Then I'll give it a new material, call it floor. And then I will go ahead and just make this completely metallic by increasing the slider all the way to one. And that should be good enough to act as our floor. Then I'll select my camera again and just place it a bit lower. So I think this looks good enough. And with that, if you're happy with what it looks like, you can go ahead and press render animation. Thank you so much for watching. If you've actually watched this far into the video, I really hope that you learned multiple different techniques that you can apply in your own animations and create surreal animations and different types of environments by yourself by combining different techniques from all the videos that have been released on my channel. I release videos every single day so I'm sure there's a lot that you could be learning from videos that are already posted and there's a lot for you to learn from the videos that are going to be released in the coming days. So until those come out keep creating and stay creative.